What is good, Regis recipients? How are y'all doing today? Let me know in the comment section. I want to thank y'all for tuning into this episode of Regis Reflections. Y'all already know each and every episode, we have a different athlete on the podcast. And on this week, this episode, we have Miss Maya Walker. Say what's up to the people, Maya. Hello. <laughs> uh, how are you doing today? How's your mental on a scale of one to 10? I feel like I'm at a nine. I just finished my, in a good way, yeah. I get yeah. I just finished my last final of college ever. Um, yeah. And now I'm focusing on graduation stuff. So it's exciting. Ooh, that's nice. What class was your final exam in? It was for a Catholicism, like history class. Yeah, it was a take home, like Ooh. essay. So how, how long was the essay? Like eight pages. That's not that's, that's, yeah, that's, it wasn't too bad. Behind you. Now you graduated. Yeah, it's behind me. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's lit. So Regis recipients, Maya here is on the Notre Dame fencing team. Now, Maya, is there a certain position that you play on this fencing team? Um, I fence foil. Well, so can you yeah. tell our listeners and viewers what foil is if they don't yeah. know? So fencing has three different weapons, foil, epee, and saber. And there's just different rules and different target areas um, for each weapon. So what I fence is you can hit like the front and the back of the person, but Ooh. everything else counts as off target. <clears throat> um, and you hit with like the tip of the blade. Tip so some of the other like saber, you like hit with the side of the blade. So you like slash basically, mm. but foil is more with the tip. So, so yeah. when you kind of like have that weapon, I've always wanted to know when fencing, does it hurt? But I know sometimes <laughs> you have gear. Does it hurt when they like? It depends where they hit you and if they hit you hard. <laughs> But it's usually okay. I've never gotten, like, actually injured from mm -hmm. fencing. So. And, and you said, like, they can only hit you in the front. So that, does that include legs or just the... No, just, like, your torso up, basically, and, like, your back as well. But, yeah, yeah legs are completely off target for mm. foil. That's good. That's good. So, Maya, where are you originally from? Yeah, I was... I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky? Yeah. <laughs> did, did you go to any um Kentucky, like, Calipari basketball games, like, at University No, I actually have never been to a UK game, which is so depressing considering I'm from Lexington. But hopefully, if I go to med school there, then I'm planning to go. Oh, But, yeah. Thinking. Okay. So, who or what got you into the sport of fencing? And what age did you kind of start? Yeah. I started when I was 10. Um, my mom actually kind of forced me. <laughs> I was doing dance and then she was like, I quit dance and she was like, you have to do a sport. So they just put me in a random like fencing class at the YMCA. My coach is, um, he used to be the Olympic coach for women's foil. Um, and he has a bunch of pretty high level athletes at his club. So I went to his YMCA class. And then after that, I started going to his club. And then I've been doing it ever since. So I think I started when I was 10 or 11, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So when you kind of like go through middle school and high school, is fencing, you know, how you have basketball like mm -hmm. during the school. Is fencing part, was that part of your curriculum or was that kind of like a club? You did that after school. Yeah. Fencing is in, at least in Kentucky, it's mm -hmm. not like a school sport. So a lot of people had no idea what I was doing, but um, it's like a club thing. So we paid like separately outside of school. Mm -hmm. um, all the tournaments were outside of school and everything like that so yeah would you say that fencing is popular in lexington kentucky or is it just a regular a regular sport mm, yeah it, it was not very popular well, it's so small like our club was really small it became more popular as like i got older mm -hmm. um with like more success of certain fencers from our club but like uh, not a lot of people knew what it was. My parents had no idea what it was before I started doing it. So yeah, that's real. That's real. Yeah. So, so you mentioned that you um, you did club throughout high school and you had tournaments, everything like that. So could you just share a little bit of just how that experience was of playing club and going on these tournaments and just the journey and everything mm -hmm. about it? Yeah. So I started doing a lot more regional and like national tournaments when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and I started thinking more about like where I wanted to go to school. Um, luckily, my club has like great connections with the head coach here which is kind of how I ended up um, becoming a Notre Dame fencer. Mm -hmm. But um, it was just like traveling every weekend. I wouldn't, I didn't go to any international stuff, but I went to like all the national um, tournaments, which would be like about once a month. Mm -hmm. And then we would have regional tournaments like every weekend for like, I feel like from like October to like June, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's like all year. All year. Um, yeah. So I would just travel with my dad to those tournaments, which was fun. And those but, tournaments, would those, would those be in Lexington, Kentucky, or would they be across? No, America? yeah, they're across everywhere. So the, the national ones are called NAX, mm -hmm. and they're, um, they like set a schedule every year, but it's like, they try to 
do it throughout the country. So like sometimes it's like Salt Lake City, sometimes it's Charlotte. Like it just depends on where they choose that year. Um, but for my region, since I'm kind of like Midwest area, all the regional tournaments would be like Chicago, St. Louis, Columbus. Um, I think we had some in Louisville once, but yeah, oh. just like around the Midwest for mm, me. That's nice. So yeah. you said that you didn't travel internationally, but where were some of the places that the club were traveling internationally? Yeah, so a lot of the fencers at my club are, a lot of them are Olympians. <laughs> so um, they were traveling like around the world basically every weekend. So my coach would be traveling with them a lot um, when it was Olympic, like qualification season or like whatever, they would be going to like fr like France, Germany, like all the places every weekend. So, wow. so yeah. how was it for you, you know, being in high school and, you know, playing fencing and you're going against Olympians, future Olympians. How was that for you, especially mentally? I feel like, honestly, sometimes it was kind of discouraging just when your own results weren't measuring up to like, what the olympians were doing um a lot of them had started younger than i did and they had a lot more experience than me so it was kind of like difficult like when i wasn't doing as well as i wanted um in the national competitions because they would go to those as well but i mean in the end it's like i was very lucky to have them on my like in my club and i could use them as resources and they really helped me like figure out where i wanted to go to school they basically helped me get into Notre Dame. So I feel like um, overall it was a good experience. Mm. And you mentioned that you felt a sign of discouragement. And we know as athletes sometimes, you know, when you have other people that are a team that can be better than you sometimes, you mm -hmm. feel discouraged. How were you able to kind of push away from that discouragement and kind of yeah. utilize your resources at the end of the day? Yeah. I feel like when I got to college, honestly, it was the transition of like, it's no longer just about you. It's like, Fencing is a very individual sport. Like you're fencing on the strip with someone. It's not like a teammate can help you out and get you another point or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when you get to college, you realize that like, even if I'm not doing as well as I want to for myself, it's really not about me. It's about the team. Um, so if I can be a good training partner or just like a good friend or whatever to whoever is going to be on the strip fencing, then that makes it more worth it. So I think I definitely liked the the team environment better when I got to college. That's good. That's good. So what age did you realize that you wanted to take uh, fencing seriously? I don't honestly can't remember. Probably high school. I remember wanting to quit when I was in middle school. And it was like a long like argument with my parents for a while. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I stuck with it. Um, but then when I got to high school and like, you know, people start talking about colleges. I was like, shoot, like I need to figure out what I'm doing. Right. That's true. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I toured a couple schools, but Notre Dame really was my That's favorite. Nice. And I knew everyone here, like from my, I think like six fencers before me from my club went here. Oh. So I had a lot of like positive, like experience already with Notre Dame. So yeah. it was a pretty easy decision. Mm -hmm. But So I know you touched a little bit on the transition and the topic of Notre Dame. And the, so how was it for you personally, the transition from club and playing in high school and in Lexington to now? University of Notre Dame, that college, how was that transition for you? Um, I feel like it went pretty well for me, honestly, because I had a, like I said, a lot of my teammates from my club had went here. So I had a pretty good support system when I got here. Um, when I came in, it was the COVID year, which was really rough, um, especially in athletics, just because we had to really be careful about who we were like hanging around because that could affect like who could fence at what meets and all of that. So that was rough. We didn't have any breaks either, which was pretty hard. Um, we went straight from August to Thanksgiving, essentially. But there were, like, no no fall break or anything like that. Yeah. So it was pretty hard. <laughs> but honestly, because it was so hard my freshman year, every year after that, it just kept getting, like, easier, like, transition-wise. I was like, oh, this isn't that bad, isn't like, that compared bad? to freshman year. Uh, so so did you utilize your uh, teammates that, went, that played in your club and that eventually came to Notre Dame, did you use them as kind of like talking to them for advice and a yeah. support system? Yeah, for sure. Especially because a lot of the the people I knew were STEM. So like I was like looking to them for advice um, when I was deciding what major I wanted to do and like if I wanted to do med school, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I was always asking them and they always gave me like realistic advice because I don't know. I feel like sometimes you can ask your advisors things, but it's better to yeah. ask people who have been through it before. That's, that's true. That's true. So you said freshman year, it was kind of, it was the COVID year for you mm -hmm. and that was kind of a difficult year for you. So mm -hmm. sophomore year and junior, how was it kind of getting out of that COVID 
restriction? How was it that transition from COVID back to now kind of regular standards for you? Yeah, I feel like it was, I I just look back on it and I feel like I was just happy all the time. I was just like, I got to see my friends more. Um, we got to go out and like do things more. Like we didn't have to just be stuck in our rooms studying every day. So I think overall it was a good experience. I can't really remember anything that happened that was like super like traumatic for me, but <laughs> okay. yeah. So wait, can you state what is your major here at the University yeah. of Notre Dame? Um, I'm studying, well, I'm done studying pre-professional <laughs> studies and um, global affairs. Take, so. take a moment of silence. Just for that. <laughs> but yeah. you and I both know that Notre Dame is an academic rigorous school. They demand from us day in and day out. Yeah. And on top of that, you are a collegiate D1 athlete now. Yeah. How do you balance <laughs> pre-med, pre-professional, global affairs with being on a D1 team? How do you balance that? Yeah. I think it's honestly just being disciplined with your time. Like, I do have time to hang out with my friends, but I feel like I choose people who will help me be motivated to do my work. So, like, I would honestly hang out with my friends a lot in the library, which, like, helped because I knew, like, there are people around me also motivated to do their work. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like I'm super, like, on a schedule every day, which helps. Mm -hmm. Not so much the senior year, but, <laughs> but every year before that, I was very, like, every minute was, like, used for, like, something for, like, school, fencing or whatever. Um, and it helps that, like, throughout high school and middle school, I had the same schedule of, like, practice at four until, like, a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, in college, it's a little more demanding because you have morning practice and lessons and stuff like that throughout the day. But um, I think overall, like, professors were really accommodating, too. I always had great professors. So it was it was hard, but I like having a schedule. So I think that helps. Schedule me. helps. Yeah. What, did you ever feel overwhelmed at any point throughout this, you know, throughout yeah. your four years here? Um, I think definitely when I was taking the MCAT, which was what I took to apply to medical school, that was overwhelming. Um, I took it once my junior year and then once my senior year. Definitely during junior year, it was stressing me out because I had a lot more credits than I did my senior year. Mm -hmm. um, but I was lucky enough to, like, take physics over the summer. So that took a lot of credits out of my, like, normal calendar year um but yeah the MCAT's pretty brutal so <laughs> studying for that was probably the most stressed I've been mm. but mm. we got through it amen. So. amen that's true that's true <laughs> yeah I know you mentioned summer a little bit do you do you all train or practice during the summer fencing here I know them or do you do, do you do that on your own time your yeah time? I mean most people do it on their own time like just go back home and like go to the clubs at home mm -hmm. um I stayed one summer like I said for physics so I fenced like at the club here but most of the time, I would just go home and fence in Lexington. And so fencing, would you say fencing is a whole a full body workout or just kind of more all arms and legs? Oh, no, I think it's full body. body. <laughs> yeah. You have to be pretty explosive, like all around and also have endurance. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so full body. So. so with being a collegiate D1 athlete here at Notre Dame, you're prone to travel. You're going to travel to other schools, travel to other tournaments. And a lot of people... When they think of the traveling aspect of college, you think, oh, you're going to this city, you're going to a hotel, you're going to be out to dinner, you can go shopping. They don't know it's a business trip, though. So could you just talk a little bit about the traveling aspect of being on the fencing team here? Yeah, I feel like it's very quick. Like, at least some of the meets I've been to, it's like, yeah, we're like traveling somewhere, but it's like you go there like at night and then you fence the next day and then you come back. So it's not like you have a lot of time for like, there was, like, some meets that are in, like, New York. I didn't go to that meet, but I know they do a little more sightseeing there. But, like, all the other meets are pretty much, like, go in, fence, and then leave. So, um, I don't know. It's just the coaches want you to be serious, as they should. And then you just kind of have to focus. Most of us are probably doing work anyways, like, on the bus or something. So, there's not really a lot of time to just, like, hang out. But <laughs> Wait, so touch on the part of doing work on the bus. How, like... That seems unreal, but it actually happens. Like you actually all yeah. actually do on the bus, like bus ride there or on the plane ride. You just doing just doing work. I would like to say that I have done that. I try, <laughs> but I know I do see a lot of my teammates, at least to the meets I've been to. I've seen a lot of them do their work on the bus, like computers out, everything. So like, um, again, it's just like utilizing your time. There's only so many hours in a day, but when you have schedules that are crazy, you kind of mm -hmm. just need to take advantage of it. So yeah, 
homework on the bus. I used to do that in high school too when I would go to tournaments. But high school, college is so different. Yeah. So much different. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. So has there ever been throughout your four years here at the University of Notre Dame on the Fenza team, has there ever been a certain practice game or moment where it just wasn't you mentally? You weren't, you were going through it. It wasn't the best time for you. Mm -hmm. And if so, how were you able to see the light and get through it? Um, honestly, I think one of the meets this season, I felt that way. It was, we were in, where were we? In Chicago at Northwestern for a tournament. And I just like was not fencing well. And it was kind of just upsetting because I knew it would be like my last meet probably of mm -hmm. college. Um, so like in the moment that day was pretty hard because I was pretty like disappointed and just like frustrated with myself. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, I got to spend time with my teammates and I knew I knew I wasn't going to fence after college. So that's kind of like helped me be like, OK, it's OK. Like it didn't go how I wanted, but I still had I still made good memories with my friends. So, mm -hmm. so you, would you say that your, your teammates and coaches kind of were a great support cast to kind of help you during that moment in a sense? Um, I would say definitely my teammates, um, my coaches, too. That meet was just a little weird because some of our coaches were I think, like, out of the country. So we didn't have, like, a lot of them there. But the ones that were there were supportive. So, um, yeah, I love our foil coach. Um, he's always been great with me. And just if I'm upset, like, at a knack or something like that, he always talks to me. And he helps me, like, treat myself a lot nicer than I would before. <laughs> That's good. Self-love yeah. is important. Yeah. Wow. So you were on the brinks of graduating from the University of Notre yeah. Dame. Amen. And you did mention that, you want to go to med school following your time here in Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But you also mentioned that you decided that you didn't want to continue with fencing following mm -hmm. Notre Dame. What was kind of the decision point of why you were kind of going the med school route instead of the fencing route post-college and even striving to go to the Olympics? Oh, I think it's just like I knew like realistically like the Olympics was never going to be something I wanted to pursue. And it's I always wanted to do med school and I want to do that while I'm young mm -hmm. so um, I want to start as soon as I can but I would fence after for fun but to be honest it's really expensive to continue fencing um, mm -hmm. when Notre Dame isn't like supporting you anymore because obviously we're graduating but I think I'm gonna like coach at home with my coach um, and mm -hmm. he's gonna let me like stay involved with the club but I'm not gonna compete for myself anymore but um, I've come to peace with that and I'm okay with it. So it's good. med school is amazing though. You yeah. becoming a doctor and everything like that. Yeah, hopefully. Do you want to work in a hospital? You want to work in a hospital or? Um, I'm not sure yet. I've been shadowing a lot this semester and I'm thinking I want to do OB or pediatrics. Um, so I could do that like in a hospital or in a clinic or something like that. But uh, I'm just trying to focus on getting in first that's true, and that's then true. I can worry about what I'm going to do after. Amen, but amen, that's yeah. Hmm. So one final question, Mike, before we wrap things up, what advice would you give to our listeners and viewers out there on their mental health journey? I would just say find a good support system um, and really work on those relationships. I feel like that's what made college athletics worth it for me was I found some of my best friends here um, and I really worked on spending time with them and everything. And I think they're my biggest support systems for my mental health. And also just like for me, like going to church and like having faith, um, that also has helped me a lot. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I know, I know that we said this is a final question. No, you're good. This is a bit better. You're good. Now, how do you incorporate your faith into not only your everyday life, but your time here in Notre Dame mm -hmm. with academics and your sport? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I feel like I didn't really start digging into my faith until I got to college when I got kept getting busier. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized like how much I really needed um, God in my life to like help me get through like all the stuff that was going on in college. And it helped having friends that also were Christians. Um, so we started going to church together more. And then I'm sure you've heard about Notre Dame Christian athletes. Mm, charity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So having people like that in your life that are always encouraging you to, you know, strengthen your relationship with God and just spend time with him and spend time with other believers. That's been very helpful. So that's probably one of the biggest things I took away, too, from being at Notre Dame was finding that group of people. Man, amen. Yeah. Keep God in your life. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, well Regis and Sabians, you heard it here from Miss Maya Walker. Thank you again, Maya, for joining us on this episode of Regis Reflections. We appreciate your insight, your story, your journey. Good luck. You're graduating. Thank you. Amen. And I yeah. hope and pray that you get into med school. All goes well into your Thank future. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Regis recipients, remember, it's okay to not be okay. You matter. It's your boy JD, and I'm out. Oh, 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 oh,